Justin Peck breaks through with high limit. Bobby Pierce tops RTJ. We've got Tuesday modified results, and I wonder if we're still buying Anthony Macri stock right now. Let's go. It's Wednesday, August 2nd. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. We reached a uh, fun milestone this week on the YouTube channel as we've crossed over 5 million total video views. That's pretty badass. There aren't that many dirt racing YouTube channels with that many views. Uh, if you watch my little screen over here as it scrolls, you'll see the, the 5M for the first time here at some point in this video. Uh, of those 5 million uh, views, more than 2.5 million have come through just the first seven months of 2023. That gives you an idea of the growth. Uh, and as uh, we work towards the uh, year-long goal of reaching 25,000 subscribers, we're just shy 21,000 currently. Uh, if you aren't subscribed yet, hit that button. It's free to do so. will always be free to do so. Also, uh, if you hit that like button on these uh, videos, that tells YouTube that this is a, a good video and that it should share it with more people. So that helps out as well. There's a ton of stuff to talk about from Tuesday night. We'll start with High Limit at Kokomo. Tyler Courtney talked to Flow Racing's Tyler Burnett at the track about his back injury suffered at Eldora. Sunshine has been sitting out with Anthony Macri and Corey Day filling in. He's not in a brace or anything, uh, does have a doctor's appointment coming up to check on his healing process. It sounds like he is hopeful to return this season if all goes well. I think that'd be good news. Hopefully he won't suffer any long-term effects. It does seem like we've had a bunch of these types of injuries lately. Obviously, Sunshine is one of them. Gunnar Ramey uh, recently hurt as well. Uh, if I was a driver, I'd certainly be checking into why and maybe making some adjustments to my seat or my safety setup to try and avoid this in the future. As for the racing at Kokomo, it was what we would have hoped for. Justin Peck drove the absolute wheels off his 13 car, uh, topped Kyle Larson and Rico Abreu at the finish. Larson was out front for the most laps around, uh, or after getting around pole sitter Corey Day around lap eight. Uh, with 10 to go, though, Young Money caught the wall uh, out of turn two in lap traffic, and it slowed his momentum just enough to allow Peck to get by. From there, Peck drove like a man possessed. He had to fend off multiple challenges from Larson down the stretch, uh, but he did score the $23,000 win, got an extra $3,000 for the Durst dice roll. I found this stat a bit surprising, but it was just Peck's second victory of the season. He's made 54 10 starts so far in 2023 with his only other win coming way back on February 26th at Lincoln during the icebreaker. That team has had a lot of bad luck this year, and I'm sure all of that was going through their minds last night, and I think provided that just little extra bit of motivation for the driver. Looking down through the results, uh, he didn't get the finish I'm sure he wanted, but Corey Day was impressive yet again. He did finish fourth. Uh, he led the first seven laps after outdueling uh, out Larson in the dash to get the pull for the feature. I think uh, he and that 7BC were fast, but I felt like a little bit of inexperience showed through uh, as Day was kind of working through some pretty heavy lap traffic at times. The decision-making and risk-taking through traffic, I think, is a huge strength for a guy like Larson. Uh, and Day will get that figured out as he races more and more, but I do think that cost him last night. I do wonder where we are right now, too, with Anthony Macri's stock. Since leaving the 39M, he's competed in nine races between the Clawson Marshall 7BC and the Indy Race Part 71. He has just a single top five finish that was a fifth at Red Hill with the All-Stars, and he only has four top tens. His average finish over that span is 11th. And I think maybe we just chalk it up to adjusting to new teams, uh, you know, and some of the other factors that happen when you make a jump like this midseason. But having Day jump in the 7BC last night and show out against a tough field, I think is a ding for Macri. To be fair, I believe last night was Macri's first trip to Kokomo, and it's probably uh, some of the tracks he's been to was his first trip there as well. But it's not like Day has a ton of experience at Kokomo either. He raced there in a midget, but just once back in 2021. Macri is effectively uh, auditioning for future rides, and he could be on the market even sooner than first thought if Sunshine is able to come back in the next few weeks. If the Central PA car owners are looking for a driver, Macri is obviously a no-brainer for those racetracks, but I think he himself has much larger aspirations. And being a national touring guy means getting up to speed quickly at tracks you haven't been to or don't race at that often. I do think his stock is maybe down just a little bit right now, especially with what we're seeing from Justin Sanders and his consistent start uh, with the Macri Motorsports team. High Limit is off for about two weeks now, returning on August 15th at Husits. The rest of the sprint car world will, uh, will turn its attention to Peavley for the Outlaws this weekend and the 360 Nationals at Knoxville. At Boone Speedway last night in Iowa, Bobby Pierce continued his march towards uh, a possible first career National Tour championship with a flag-to-flag -flag victory. Ricky Thornton Jr. drove up from six to finish in second. He kept Pierce on his over that second half, but just couldn't find a way by. Tanner English finished the night in third, with Ryan Gustin finishing outside the top ten last night. 
Chris Madden's fourth place results saw him jump back to second in the Outlaw Championship standings. Uh, the gap is now 84 points, though, between first and second. That's about 42 positions on track for reference. Pierce and RTJ continue to summit their positions as the top two guys right now in Dirt Land Auto Racing in 2023. And I wonder what our reactions would have been if we were told these two guys would be it before the year started. Thornton was solid a year ago with Lucas, no doubt about it, grabbing a couple of wins, finishing a nice third in the championship. But the leap that team has made this season has been pretty incredible. North of 20 wins and over half a million dollars in earnings, and we still have plenty of big races left this year. And Pierce had only previously run a full season with one of the two tours once in his career. I predicted back at the start of the year he'd be off the Outlaw Tour by the spring, and now it's August, and he's building a serious championship lead. Uh, a lot of these late model racers uh, and more uh, will be right back at it tomorrow night when the USA Nationals get rolling at Cedar Lake. Up in Canada on Tuesday night, Mike Mahaney picked up his third career Super Dirt Car Series win, getting by David Bear on a restart with less than 20 to go and leading the rest of the way. Mahaney pocketed 10 grand for the victory, guaranteed himself into the feature at Super Dirt Week. Bear settled for second with Eric Rudolph in third. Matt Shepard was out front for a lot of that event, but what looked like maybe a bit too eager of a move from Bear sent Shepard around on lap 49. The 9S went to the tail and he eventually finished in ninth. Shepard still leads the championship Championship, though he'll look to rebound tonight when this run through Canada comes to an end with a stop at Brockville. The other Northeast Modified show was the Short Track Super Series at the Action Track USA. Again, exactly what we would have hoped for for an event. Mike Guler came out on top of what turned into an absolute slugfest of a modified race. He topped Corey Cormier and uh, Matt Stengel in that one. The track had some character. Guys were not afraid to get their elbows out during that 50-lapper. i definitely sign up for that one again next season. Uh, the next series points race for the Short Track Super Series is next Tuesday at New Egypt. If you want to dive into some other dirt racing content this week, Wing Nation has Brian Brown, Chase Randall, and Greg Wilson. I was actually on QuickTime last week with the guys, so you can check that one out. Do Much on Dirt has Nick Dietz, and there are new episodes of Loud Pedal, The Dirt Reporters, The Dirt Nerds, Dirt Track Confessions, and Dirt Track Weekly. To see the full list of shows and episodes, head over to dirttracker.com slash podcasts. Uh, that's it for this Wednesday edition of The Daily. Make sure to hit up that streaming schedule at dirttracker.com slash watch tonight to see what your options are for today. Uh, you can also get merch. I'm wearing the Dirt Tracker logo t-shirt today. You can get this over at shop.dirttracker.com. There's also stickers. There's also uh, stickers like this. This is the midget sticker. Uh, there's also koozies and all sorts of other fun stuff over there. So you can do that shop.dirttracker.com. Shipping is free for uh, people who live in the U.S. if you spend $20 or more. I hope you guys have a good day out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.